Hello and welcome to our second lesson in our course on performance indices. Today we'll be walking through the derivation of a performance index and highlighting some additional resources for the theory behind them. Let's show that workflow from the end of lesson one on our screen again. Here we see how the function constraints and objectives we identified during our translation step are used to derive our performance index. Each of these steps identifies an expression that we combine to get that index at the end. But what does this look like exactly? We will use our example from lesson one of the climbing rope. The function, this is a tie in tension. We can think of the rope like this, a narrow cylinder of some cross-sectional area in considerable length with force being applied at either end. The objective, we're trying to minimize our mass we can calculate the mass of our cylinder, aka rope, with this equation, where our mass is m, area is a, length is l, and rho is density. The constraint? We have some minimum value for strength for the rope to meet our safety factor. For this derivation, we will use yield strength, though depending on the design, tensile strength can be used if available. The equation for yield strength is sigma sub y is equal to force f over area A. Notice how we have area in both of these equations. Area is the free variable in this case. I have some length of rope required for climbing, but it can vary in thickness in order to meet the safety constraint. We don't want our Ashby chart to depend on the design parameter, just material properties. This can be achieved by using the constraint to eliminate the dependence on the design parameter in the objective function. Therefore, I rearrange my stress equation at its limit, solving for area and substituting for the design parameter in my equation for mass, which is our objective function. Doing this gets me the resulting equation shown here. Now, this just looks like a bunch of variables. Where is our material index? Notice how we have three key aspects of design in this equation. The functional requirement, which in this case is force, the geometric requirement, length L, and our material requirements, yield strength and density. We can rearrange the different parts of the equation to group our material properties together. This reveals our performance index. Now this performance index, denoted by capital M, is the term we would use to minimize our mass, as that's what our objective is. However, when using these indices with our Ashby charts, which we'll demo in our next lesson, it's more convenient to look at the maximum value. By taking the reciprocal or the inverse of our index, we now have the term we want to maximize, something for you to pay attention to during derivation. Now that I've derived one performance index, do I have to do this step every single time? Well, this performance index and others you may derive are generic due to the fact they don't contain that functional or geometric requirement. Now, of course, we need to identify these requirements before reaching our final design, but being able to consider multiple materials that have varying cross-sectional areas or other design parameters can be very beneficial, especially in the early stages of design. Then we can determine the functional and geometric requirements through other means, like finite element simulation. I highly encourage you to understand how to derive performance indices and the logic behind them if you plan on using them. It's always best practice to understand where an equation comes from in order to ensure that you're using it properly. To learn more about how performance indices connect with our material selection methodology, please check out Professor Ashby's textbook, Material Selection and Mechanical Design, and our Material Selection white paper, which will be linked on the resources link page in our course. Another reference that we link is our performance index booklet, which contains a multitude of pre-derived performance indices for a variety of objectives and functions. So we've defined what a performance index is, and we know how to derive them. So in our next course, we're going to be showing how we can use performance indices alongside Ashby charts in ANSYS Grant to EDUPAC to perform selection. My name is Dr. Caitlin Tyler. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.